But if you get 30,000, you don't get halfway around. It sucks, man. <laughs> so it is, I am hoping that you all, when you are graduated from this fabulous university, will go out and change the world. So I am waiting to answer your question. Have I influenced anybody? You guys prove it, man. Go out there. Okay, let's take one from the balcony. Last question. It's going to be brilliant. I can't see exactly. Build it out. What made you change your mind about GMOs? Oh, what made you change your mind about GMOs? And we're in St. Louis, home of Monsanto. <laughs> <laughs> so let us start with my original concern about GMO, GMOs have nothing to do with food safety. Food safety is easily provable. We have our good friends, the lab rats, and you feed them corn and soybeans and you ask them, how do you feel? <laughs> this rat, and she explains, I'm fine, more energy than ever, I feel great. Really glad that these corn kernels are huge for the popcorn. <laughs> My concern was that you couldn't know what would happen to an ecosystem, that you couldn't exactly predict what you might do by introducing organisms that uh, had never been in the ecosystem before. And so there'd be an interaction, especially with pests or parasites. And you run the risk of introducing a resistant strain of bacteria or mosquito or something that you didn't anticipate. But in the last 20 or maybe 25 years, researchers have found a way to found ways to sequence the genes of farm crops, for example, crop plants, in five minutes. It used to take a month or six months. Now it's less than five minutes. So these researchers are actually able to predict what will happen to the ecosystem. They're actually able to do it with extreme care. And then I changed my mind. I realized that, uh, that this is a solve, that this is a tractable problem. And so furthermore, as we get nine billion people in the world, everybody's gonna wanna eat, and we're gonna want new types of food sources. And I think, this whole idea of plant-based diets will catch on. And I think the food we eat, and I think the food we eat will change. Uh, there's a famous example of it. It used to be illegal to, fill, to feed prisoners in uh, Maine lobster more than twice a week, because it was considered a junk fish. But now, lobster, that's the most expensive thing in the menu, so things change. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if new types of food are introduced that are based on new types of crop, or uh, different types of crops. And the other thing that happened after I published my mind change was there's all this compelling research that genes from one organism are introduced in another organism all the time in nature. And uh, it just happens in a at a more at a natural rate, but uh, it's very reasonable that our the mitochondria in our cells are the result of an invasion of one organism from another. So I changed my mind, and I'll just say to everybody, this is the idea in science that I guess is the most important idea of all, and that is that things change. You can change your mind, and uh, uh, this is the key. You know, when I was a kid. Uh, people thought uh, people thought that the universe was slowing down. That the cosmologists measured and figured the stars were slowing down. And the question was, after the Big Bang, would it all come crashing back together in a big crunch? And would there be a bang, crunch, bang, crunch thing? But it turns out the universe is accelerating. Some the cosmologists of my youth were not correct. So, uh, do you know why the universe is accelerating? Nobody knows why. <laughs> but maybe you all will figure it out. And dare I say it, change the world. Thank you all very much.
And that's Bill Nye.